Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today is Wednesday, May 18th, 2022. Today I'm going to recap yesterday's NBA Eastern Conference Finals games and look ahead to tonight's Western Conference Finals games. Stanley Cup playoffs go over yesterday's round two games. Look ahead to today's round two games. Major League Baseball, WNBA. We have Major League Soccer tonight, so we'll, I'll look at that slate. Um, we'll go over the uh, tee times for the PGA Championship. We'll go over the results for the NBA Draft Lottery. We will look at primaries results. We'll preview the Mass Singer finale. News and notes and best bets. So a big show today. We'll start the NBA playoffs. We'll um, look back on the games from, or the game from yesterday. Look ahead to tonight's game. Uh, the Heat defeat the Celtics by a score of 118 to 107 to take a 1 0 series lead. Jimmy Butler was outstanding 41 points, 9 boards, and 5 assists. He was the best player on the court, easy. Jason Tatum, 29 points, and 6 assists for Boston. Um, so I was right about the over, and I was right about the Heat winning game one. And then tonight, 9 o'clock, TNT of the Mavericks and the Warriors game one from. The Chase Center. My projection is Golden State by four and a half total of two fourteen and three quarters. And Golden State is favored by five total two fourteen and a half. This is yikes. Right on the money. Um if I had an edge anywhere, it'd be the Mavericks getting to five. Um I don't like it. But if I had to make a play here, it's Dallas plus the five. So it's a slight lean to Dallas, but I do expect Golden State to win the basketball game tonight, and which should be a really interesting conference finals. All right, Stanley Cup playoffs. We will look back on yesterday's few games and look ahead to tonight's games in which those series will begin. Lightning over the Panthers, 4-1 to to take a 1-0 series lead. Number 3 started game with a golden assist. Corey Perry, number 2 started game with a golden assist. Akita Kucherov, number 1 started game with 33 saves on 34 shots. Andre Vasilevsky. Avalanche over the Blues, 3-2 in overtime. On a game winner by Josh Basin, 8-0-2 in the overtime. As the Ops take a 1-0 series lead. Number 3 started game with a goal, Valerie Nishuskin. Number 2 started game with twenty or 51 saves on 54 shots. Jordan Binghamton, number 1 started the game with the overtime winner and an assist, Josh Mason, Manson. Now we look ahead tonight, 7 o'clock ESPN. You have the Rangers and the Canes from the PNC Bank Center in Raleigh. Canes are minus 164. Rangers are plus 136. Over under 6. Overs plus 104. Unders minus 128. Rangers plus 1 half is minus 176. Canes minus 1 half is plus 145. I love the Canes in regulation. Love it. Minus 110. Um, they are just so dominant at home. Listen, if the Rangers win a road game in the series, the Yorks might win the series, especially if they're up three games to two. And I said that when I made the picks for each series. If New York's up three to two, they'll win the series. Or whomever's up three two will win the series. Because I think this ends in six. And then we say Carolina wins the series. So I'm gonna say Canes in regulation at minus one ten at home. Love it. And at nine thirty on ESPN, you have the Oilers and the Flames. The Flames are minus 160. The Oilers are plus 132. Over under 6.5. Over is minus 102. Under is minus 120. Oilers plus 1.5 is minus 92. Flames minus 1.5 is plus 158. I like the over. Um, the uh, Alberta rivalry. These teams like to go over. I think there's going to be a lot of goals. I think Markstrom will play well. I would go over and in Flames money line as like a same gamer. But for the play for the podcast, I would go over 6.5 at minus... 102. All right, now we'll move on to Major League Baseball. We'll go over the results from yesterday very quickly, and we'll look ahead to today's games. White Sox over the Royals, 3 0, game one doubleheader. Dodgers over the D Bucks, 7 6, game one doubleheader. Mets over the Cardinals, 3 1, game one doubleheader. Reds over the Guardians, 5 4 and 10. Rays over the Tigers, 8 1. Marlins over the Nationals, 5 1. Padres over the Phillies, 3 0. Yankees over the Orioles, 5-4. Tillbutter game two. Cards over the Mets, 4-3. Blue Jays over the Mariners, 3-0. 
the Wonder Game 2, Royals over the White Sox 2 to 1, Astros over the Red Sox 13 to 4, Braves over the Brewers 3 zip, Cubs over Pirates 7 zip, Rangers over the Angels 10 to 5, Giants over the Rockies 10 to 7, A's over the Twins 5 to 2, the Wonder Game 2, Dodgers over the Diamondbacks 12 to 3. All right, now we look to today's games. At 1 o'clock, you have the Braves and the Brewers. Max Fried and Corbin Burns. The Brewers are minus 142 favorites. The Braves are plus 120 over under 6.5. Overs minus 106, unders minus 114. Braves plus 1.5 is minus 192. Brewers minus 1.5 is plus 158. For this game, I'm going to go with Milwaukee first half run line at plus 104. But I do not feel good about it. Tigers Rays. Eduardo Rodriguez and Drew Rasmussen. Rays minus 178. Tigers plus 150 over under 6.5. Overs minus 120. Unders minus 102. Tigers plus 1.5 is minus 152. Rays minus 1.5 is plus 126. Tough one. But I'm going to go with pretty much the same pick as I had the last one. Laying the favored team with the run line in the first half and minus half, and that is the Rays. 3 o'clock, Giants-Rockies. Logan Webb and Kyle Freeland. Giants minus 162, Rockies plus 136, over under 10 and a half. Overs minus 120, unders minus 102. Giants minus 1 half is minus 08. Rocks plus 1 half is minus 11. I'm going with the under. I mean, that is just a high number. 330 Twins A's. Sonny Gray and Dalton Jeffrey. Sonny Gray returns to Oakland where he um, first began his career. Talk about an even matchup. Um, the Twins are minus 164. Oakland plus 136. Over under 7 half. Over is plus 102. Under is minus 124. Twins minus 1F is plus 105. A's plus 1F is minus 136. I like Oakland plus 136. Um, 49.2% chance to win according to ESPN Analytics. So, like, that number feels like good value. 4 o'clock, the Diamondbacks and the Dodgers. Walker Bueller and Zach Davies. Oh, my God. The Dodgers are minus 300. The D-backs are plus 245 over on 8.5. Over is minus 105. Others minus 115. D-backs plus 1F is plus 122. Dodgers minus 1F is minus 146. Um, for this game, I'm going to go with under 4.5 first half total runs at minus 108. 6 o'clock, Reds Guardians. Tyler Mealy and Cal Quantrill. The Guardians minus 134, Reds plus 114, over under 8, overs minus 105, unders minus 115. Reds plus 1F is minus 194, Guardians minus 1F is plus 160. Um, tough one. Um, I'm going to go with the Guardians first half money line minus 114. Astros Red Sox, Luis Garcia, Nick Paveda. Astros minus 138, Red Sox plus 114, over under 9, overs minus 102, under minus 120. Astros minus 1F is plus 120, Red Sox plus 1F is minus 144. I like the Astros first half result at plus 105. 640, Nats Marlins, Josiah Gray and Pablo Lopez. Marlins minus 196, Nats plus 164, over under 7.5. Overs minus 104, unders minus 118. Nats plus 1.5 is minus 134, Marlins minus 1.5 is plus 110. For this game, I'm going to go with first. Oh, I want to say first half bets, but that's off the table. I like the pick, really, but I like the over. Um. I could see one of those bullpens falling apart. Full game over. It was a good one. 6.45, Padres, Phillies. Blake Snell making his season debut against Zach Wheeler. Um, Phillies minus 154. Padres plus 130. Over under 8. Overs minus 104. Unders minus 118. Padres plus 1.5 is minus 162. Phillies minus 1.5 is plus 134. Um, for this game, 
I'm going to go with the first half over 5.5 at plus 116. It's just the unknown of Blake Snell in this spot. Um, 7 o'clock, Yanks Orioles. Garrett Cole against Jordan Lyles. Yanks minus 270, Orioles plus 220 over under 7.5. Overs minus 118, unders minus 104. Yankees minus 1.5 is plus, or minus 162. Orioles plus 1.5 is plus 134 to O's. After a surprisingly decent start, I've fallen apart a little bit against the Tigers and now the Yankees. For this game, I'm going to go with the Yankees' first half run line, minus 1.5 at plus 108. I feel pretty good about that. Um, Mariners, Blue Jays, Marco Gonzalez, and Kevin Gossman. Toronto minus 245, Mariners 2-1 to one underdogs, over under 8, overs minus 105, unders minus 115. Mariners plus 1 half is minus 108, Blue Jays minus 1 half is minus 111. Um, I am going to go with over 8 at minus 105. I can see one of the bullpens coming apart. Cardinals, Mets, Jordan Hicks, and Max Scherzer. Mets minus 198, Cards plus 166, over under 7, overs minus 102, and this minus 120. Cardinals plus 1F is minus 134, Mets minus 1F is plus 112. For this game, I'm going to go with under 3.5, first half total runs at minus 115. 7.30, Pirates, Cubs. Luno is going for Pittsburgh, and Drew Smiley is going for Chicago. Fandle does not have the game posted. And I'm checking right now to see if DraftKings does, and they do. And it looks like it's going to be Mitch Keller going for Pittsburgh. Cubs minus 160, Pirates plus 140, over under 7.5. Over is minus 120, and there's even money. Pirates plus 1.5 is minus 155. Cubs minus 1.5 is plus plus. 135. Um, Drew Smiley's been okay this year. Um, so, hmm. I'm going to do something different. And I'm going to go over four and a half team total runs for the Cubs at plus 110. Because DraftKings has the uh, stuff. And, I couldn't find any first half stuff, so I decided to go with something different for that one. 8 o'clock, Angels Rangers. Shoei Otani and Dane Dunning. Not a bad pitching matchup, low key. The Angels are road favorites at minus 166. The Rangers plus 140 over under 7.5. Over is plus 104. Under is minus 128. Angels minus 1.5 is plus 106. Rangers plus 1.5 is minus 128. Still going with the over. I think there could be a bullpen collapse. In this game. And then, last but not least, the White Sox and the Royals. Lucas Giolito and Zach Greinke. Decent pitching matchup. White Sox minus 156. Royals plus 132. Over under 8. Overs minus 114. Others minus 106. White Sox minus 1F is plus 105. Royals plus 1F is minus 136. So, good to see Lucas Giolito coming back off the injured list. Um, so... I kind of like the Royals to win this game straight up at plus 132 because of Giolito coming back from injury. We don't know what he's going to look like. Zach Greinke hasn't been that bad. But 46% chance of plus 132 I think is good value. So give me the Royals at plus 132. All right, now I'll move on to the WNBA. We will recap the games from yesterday and look ahead to tonight's games. Sun over to Liberty, 92-65. Dream over to Fever, 101-79. Mystics over to Wings, 84-68. Aces over to Mercury, 86-74. And the Lynx over to Sparks, 87-84. The last two games were Commissioner's Cup games. Only one game tonight, 10 o'clock on Facebook. You have the Sky and the Storm. Um, the Storm looking to get off the schneid a little bit here. Um... The Sky are favored, though, by 3.5 totals, 161 half. I'm taking the Storm plus the 3.5 to win the game out right at home. I like them plus 138 as well. All right, now I'll move on to Major League Soccer. We have an interesting slate 
tonight of games. Um, but you know what? I'm going to actually uh, put some bets on some of these games because it's a Wednesday show. Why not? Um, so first up, on the docket tonight, we got the DC United hosting NYCFC. Um, NYCFC 6th in the East. DC United 8th in the East. Um, so if I had to make a pick here, um, I'm going NYCFC on the road at minus 105. Red Bulls host in Chicago. Um, Red Bulls in 5th. Chicago's at the bottom. Feels like the Red Bulls are a little bit of a lock. So, I would do that in a uh, a money line parlay with a bunch of favorites. Philadelphia is hosting Miami. Um, Philly is dropped to uh, third in the standings. But they're, I think, are still the best team in the East, along with NYCFC and the Red Bulls. It's those three, in my mind, it, and it's everybody else. And I would put them in a money line parlay with the Red Bulls. 8 o'clock, Minnesota and the LA Galaxy. Um, Galaxy's in 4th, Minnesota's in 10th. Um, I just think the Galaxy are a little bit better. But I don't know if I'll pick them here to win. So instead, I'm going to go with the tie, the draw, plus 230. Um... 8.30, Houston, Seattle. Um, Seattle's underachieved so far this year. Houston's been okay. I think this is another draw. I'm going to go. Um, with the draw here, plus 210. Um, Nashville hosts Montreal. Um, Montreal is first in the East, amazingly enough, and Nashville is eighth in the West, but I think this is a draw, plus 230. Kansas City hosts Colorado, um, Colorado seventh in the West, KC is at the bottom of the standings. I would throw Colorado into that money line. Wait a minute. They're plus 155. That's a steal. I throw a team that I think um, has some value as a road team, as a slight road favorite. I'd throw Colorado in there with uh, Philly and Red Bulls in a parlay there. And maybe NYCFC as well. Um. 10 o'clock, you have Vancouver and Dallas. Um, Dallas is in second. Vancouver's at the bottom. Dallas, you throw them into any um, money line parlay. They're plus 125. 10.30, you have LAFC and Austin. Um, two of the top three teams in the Western Conference. Um, I think these two teams are contenders. I like the draw here. But wait a minute. That's crazy that LAFC is that big of a favorite against Austin. I think Austin could win. But I would bet the draw plus 350. That's my favorite value play on the board. The most overvalued favorite on the board in soccer tonight is LAFC. By far. That's very disrespectful to to Austin. And last but not least, San Jose and Portland. Um, San Jose is at the bottom in 12th and Portland's in 9th. Um, San Jose is a slight home favorite. This is where I'm going to go with the road underdog in Portland to win outright. I will take them at plus 240 to win.
All right, so that was fun doing some soccer for a while. Now we'll do some golf. Um, we'll look at the uh, tee times for the PGA Championship. At 8 o'clock It's where it all starts off with John Daly, Sean M- Michelle, and Young Yen Young. Eight oh five. You have Ryan Palmer, Alex Loren, and Robert McIntyre. Um, Troy Merritt's at eight eleven. Um, eight twenty two. Chris Kirk, Mackenzie Hughes, eight twenty seven. Eight thirty three. Mito Pereira, eight thirty eight. A good trio. Tony Finau, Hideki Matsuyama, Xander Schauffele. 844, Kevin Strillman, Carlos Ortiz. 849, Bryson DeChambeau, Tyrell Hatton, and Max Homa. 855, Cam Davis, Matt Kuchar, and Ryuka Hoshino. 9 o'clock, Walter Zalatoris, Cam Smith, Victor Hovland. 906, Stuart Sink, Jason Duffner. 911, Rory McIlroy. Jordan Spieth, and Tiger Woods. So great to see Tiger out there for the PGA Championship. I'm so excited. 917, Abraham Answer, Kramer Hickok. 922, Bubba Watson, Justin Rose, Patrick Reed. 928, Matt Jones, and Gary Higo. 933, Lucas Glover, Kevin Na. 939, Taylor Hoke, Saiwo Kim, Bayo Hosler. 944, Sam Burns, Davis Riley, Cam Young. 959, Lee Westwood, Gary Woodland, and Francesco Molinari. 1001, Sebastian Munoz. 1006, Brian Harmon. Brendan Steele at 1012, 1017, Lucas Griffin. 125, Taylor Gooch. Kyle Gulley's at 136, 141. You have Sean McCarty. 152, Cam Triangle, Adam Hadwin, Hudson Swafford. 158, Scott Stalling, Seamus Power, Russell Knox. 203, Brooks Kepka, Adam Scott, and Shane Lowry. 209, Corey Connors, Jason Kokrak, and Christian Zienenhout. 214, Justin Thomas, Dustin, Justin Thomas, Dustin Johnson, and Patrick Cantlay. 220, Mark Leach, Big Keegan Bradley. 225, Ricky Fowler, Harold Varner III, Jason Day. 231, Zach Johnson, Camp Champ, and Brian Henley. 236, Colin Mariqua, John Rahm, and Scotty Scheffler. 242, Webb Simpson, Brandon Grace, and Henrik Seidson. 247, Luis Olson, Daniel Berger, and Ian Poulter. Um, 253, JJ Spawn, Adam Shank, and Seb Straka. 258, Kevin Kistner, Tommy Fleetwood, and Brett Horschel. 304, Matt Wolf, Keith Mitchell. 309, Matt Fitzpatrick, Charles Schwartz, Sergio Garcia. 315, Lucas Herbert. 320, Henry Higgs, Joaquin Neiman, and Van Royen. 326, Maverick McDaly. 331, Jonathan Vegas. 337, Patton Gazier, Luke List. 342, Joel Dahman, Aaron Weiss. And that's really it among the notables. And my pick to win the PGA Championship is someone I think is just due to come through. He is 16-1 to to win it. And I'm going to go with Justin Thomas. Who I think is just due to come through in a tournament. Um... I don't know if I mentioned this, but 203 uh, Brooks Kepka. I, I feel like I skipped him. So apologies. So uh So I'm gonna go with Justin Thomas at sixteen to one to win the PGA championship. Alright. Now I'm gonna talk about the Results from the NBA Draft Lottery, which was last night. 
And yours truly correctly predicted the winner of the draft lottery, the Orlando Magic. So congrats to the Magic. A team that played really hard down the stretch last year for Jamal Mosley. Um, I think that the NBA should um, really um, eliminate tanking in all ways possible. And a team that really was um, trying at the end of the season with a good young core um, wins the lottery. So... I like to see that um, basketball gods deserved um, to give Orlando this opportunity. Um, The second overall pick, the Oklahoma City Thunder, who did everything to tank their way into the top three. And that's what happened. So they'll get somebody good with the second pick. Um, Coming in at number three... was the Houston Rockets. Um, So they'll get a good player, the third overall pick. At four, sneaking in there, the Sacramento Kings, who um, usually doesn't get this much uh, lottery luck. But here we are. So good for the Kings jumping into the top four. A big loser is the Detroit Pistons, who was having a... Fantasies about having one of the big three draft prospects to pair up with Cade Cunningham. They're losers. Um, with the sixth pick will be the Indiana Pacers. Picking seventh will be the Portland Trailblazers. Pelicans will be eight. Spurs, nine. Washington, ten. Knicks, 11. Uh, Thunder at the Clippers pick at 12. Charlotte, 13. And the Cavs, 14. So... The Kings are the t- the team that bumps up to four. Um, so they'll get a decent player to pair with um, that core. Or do they trade the pick and try for a win-now guy to go with DeMont Savonis and De'Aaron Fox? So the Kings have a lot of options with that fourth pick. And them jumping really uh, um, gives them a real nice opportunity to do something with that pick. All right, the primaries. Um, They were last night um, in a couple of states. Um, We had a couple gubernatorials and a couple of Senate stuff that um, that I like to... uh, Touch on. Um, so, we will start um, with Pennsylvania, um, who had an interesting uh, gubernatorial primary. Um, So, they were um, still counting ballots, amazingly enough. And they weren't sure um, who was going to end up coming through. And ultimately, they... um, Declared some winners. Um, so winning the Democratic side, Josh Sharpiro, and the Republican Doug Mastriano. So, those are your two winners. Um. So, um, Shapiro got a hundred percent of the vote on the Democratic side, and on the Republican side, um. With 94% of the vote in, uh, Mastriano got 44.2% of the vote. Lou Barletta got 20.2. William McSwain got 15.5. Dave White got 9.7. Melissa Hart, um, who withdrew, 3.9. Jill Gale, 2.1. Jake Corman, who withdrew, 1.9. Charlie Garreau, 1.4. And Niche Zama, 1.1. 
Um. So, Oregon was an interesting gubernatorial. Um, we do not know who their Republican nominee is yet, but coming out with the Democratic side was Tina Kotek. Um... Who, I'm trying to pull up the uh, the voting percentages here. Um, hold on, guys. Yeah, so Tina Kotek got 57.4% of the vote. And, by the way, 84% of the votes have been counted and estimated. Um, Tobias Reed, 33%. Patrick Starnes, 2.2. George Crowell, 1.9. Michael Trimble, 1. John Sweeney, 9 tenths. Julian Bell, 8 tenths. Dave Stauffer, 5 tenths. Wilson Bright, 5 tenths. Ifan Machiko Daru, 4 tenths. Genevieve Wilson, 4 tenths. 3 tenths. Keisha Merchant, David Beebe, Michael Cross, and then Peter Hall. Two tenths, and then the Republican Party. Um, we still don't know. Uh, your leader right now is Christine Drizan at twenty three point eight percent of the vote, with an estimated of ninety percent of the vote counting. Bob Tiernan eighteen point seven, Stan Pullman ten point one, Bridget Barton nine point six, Carrie McQuiston eight point eight, Bud Pierce eight point six, Mark Thielman seven point four, Bill Seesmore three point eight, Jessica Gomez. 2.7, Tim McLeod, 1.2, Nikes, 2.2, Court, Court Boyce, 1.2, Brandon Merritt, 1%, Reed Christensen, 9 tenths, Amber Richardson, 6 tenths, and in 1 tenth each, Raymond Baldwin, David Birch, John Presco, and Stefan Streck. I think ultimately uh, Drazan will hold on, which I think is a little weird that they didn't call um, the Republican primary for governor. For Oregon yet. And then there's a couple other um, primaries I wanted to touch on. Um, your winner for the Democratic primary for Idaho, Stephen Height, got the, uh, the vote through. Um, he has 77.3% of the vote with 60% of the vote um, in. So uh, they declared Height the winner as he will go up against incumbent Governor Brad Lillo. So that is interesting. Um, so some Senate stuff. Um, Oregon Republican Party... Um, Joe Ray Perkins is in the lead at 32.5%. And then second right now is Darren Harbick at 30.6%, with an estimated 87% of the votes counted. And Democrat, you have a winner in Oregon, um, Ron Wyden, 87% of the vote counted at 90% of the vote. Um, all right, so I'm going to do Pennsylvania. Um, Real quick with the uh, um, with the Senate, um, your leader right now, not yet counted, um, declared for Republican Party Mehmet Oz at thirty one point three percent of the vote. In second right now is Dave McCormick at thirty one point one percent of the vote. Kathy Barnett twenty four point eight percent of the vote. And then 5.4, Carla Stans, Jeff Bardos, 4.9, Sean Gale, 1.5, and George Bocchetto, 1%. And then you have a winner on the Democratic side, um, John Fetterman, 59% of the vote, Connor Lamb, 26.5, Malcolm Kenyatta, 10.3, and Alex Khalil, 4.3. And then they have a ton of... uh, 
Senate stuff, House stuff. Um, so, District 1, you have Ashley Ayotts and Brian Fitzpatrick. District 2, Brendan Boyle and Aaron Bashir. District 3, Dwight Evans. District 4, Madeline Dean and Christian Nascimento. District 5, Mary Gay Scanlon and David Golich. District 6, Christy Houlihan. And um, we have um, Guy Sirichi, uh up 3.1%, not yet called. District 7, Susan Wild um, and Elisa Scheller, 2.6% with the lead of, in terms of percentage, not called yet. District 8, Matt Cartwright and Jim Bognett. District 9, Amanda Waldman and David Muser. District 10, um, Shamine Daniels has a 4.9% lead in the Democrat side, not yet called. And then Scott Perry wins Republican District 11. Bob Hollister and Lloyd Smooker, District 12, Summer Lee with a 0.4% chance or 0.4% lead on the Democratic side. And Mike Doyle wins Republican side. Um, districts 13 through 15, all Republicans, John Joyce Guy, Rashantler, and Glenn Thompson. District 16, um, Dan Pastora and Mike Kelly. And in District 17, Chris Deluzio and Jeremy Schaffer. So, um, North Carolina had a couple primaries, um, results to, um, Senate, you have a winner on the Republican primary, Ted Budd, 58.6% of the vote with an estimated 90% or 98% counted. Coming in second was Pat McCrory, 24.6%. Third, Mark Walker, 92 um, Margie Eastman, 2.9. Dave Flaherty and Kenneth Harper, 9 tenths. And in 4 tenths, um, Jen Bondward, Charles Moss, Leonard Bryant, Benjamin Griffiths, and Deborah Tashovo. And in 3 tenths percent, Lee Bryan, Drew Beliska, and in Lachika Sabathu. The Democratic primary, um, Cherry Beasley went one running away, eighty one point one percent of the vote with the ninety eight point or ninety eight percent of the votes counted. Um, James Carr three point five, Alicia Hammond three point four, Marcus Williams two point eight, Constance Johnson two, um, one point six, Rhett Newton and Terrell Booker one point one, BK McGinnis and Robert Cologne, and a point eight percent Greg Antoine and Tobias Legron. And they had a a lot of house stuff as well. Um, so District 1, Don Davis and Sandy Smith for Democrat and Republican. District 2, Deborah Ross and Christine Villaverde. District 3, Barbara Gaskins and Greg Murphy. District 4, Valerie Foshi and Courtney Geals. District 5, Kyle Parrish and Virginia Fox. District 6, Kathy Manning and Christian Castelli. District 7, they didn't call Democrat yet, but Charles Graham has a 1.8% lead. And then David Roser wins Republican. District 8, Scott Hoffman and Dan Bishop. District 9, Ben Clark and Richard Hudson. District 10, Pat Jeneman and Patrick McHenry. District 11, Jasmine Beach, Ferreira and Chuck Edwards. District 12, Alma Adams and Tyler Lee. District 13, Willie Nickel and Bo Hines. And District 14, Jeff Jackson and Pat Harrigan. Um... And there's one more primary that I wanted to uh, go over, and that was Kentucky. So for Senate Republican primary, Ron Paul wins 86.3% of the vote. That was a big win for Ron Paul. Uh, Valerie Frederick, 3.6. Paul Hamilton, 3.5. Arnold Blankenship, 2.6. And Tammy Stenfield, 2.5. Um, and then John Schneese, or Schneese. Um, 1.5. Democratic Party, um, Charles Booker ran away with his 73.2% of the vote with a 97% counted. Joshua Blandon, 10.6. John Morrell, 9.9. And Ruth Gayo, 6.2. House, um, District 1, Jimmy Osbrooks and James Connor, or Comer. District 2, Hank Linderman and Brett Guthrie. 
District Dream, Morgan McGravy, McGarvey, and Stuart Ray with a, a two tenths percent lead in Republican not called yet. District four, Matthew Lehman and Thomas Massey. District five, Connor Halbeeb and Harold Rogers. And District six, Jeffrey Young and Andy Barr. All right, so that's it for primaries. That was a lot that we had to discuss. Mass Singer finale is tonight. Um, it's hard to believe that we're here already. Um, this season went really quick. Um, I want to talk about the uh, Road to the Finals episode. Um, Ringmaster talked about uh, a little bit about her, her love for cats. Um, and. She hinted at her two finale songs being a really special song and then a fun song. Um, and then they did a round two. She was in round two. Um, in terms of um, her group. So... Um, those contestants spoke a little bit, and then um, and then each contestant had a new, a new clue to close out the show. Ringmaster, uh, hers was a uh, a photo. Um, Prince, um, talks about how bad he wanted to throw up the final with um his Spanish when he sang a uh, cup of life by Ricky Martin. And then round three did their um, contestants recap. And Prince's new clue was a howl. So um, that's very interesting. Um, Firefly talks about her love for Michael Jackson. She was in round one, and then the round one contestants spoke about their experiences. And then her new clue was a skateboard. All right, so uh, apparently each contestant is singing two songs tonight. Which is different in a lot of ways, because usually each contestant sings one song. So I guess that's not how it's going to go this year. So that's cool that each contestant gets to sing twice so he could um, get a better idea who could be potentially under the masks. So in third place, I have Firefly. I think Firefly is the weakest of the three. I thought that round one was the weakest of the three groups that sung together. Um, so... If I had a guess right now, it's Keisha Cole. Because there's a lot of clues hinting towards Keisha Cole. Um, coming in second, I have The Prince. I love Prince. I think Prince has a chance to win. But I just think that um, Ringmaster's better. So I think the runner-up will be Prince. And I think he'll sing his heart out tonight. And if I had a guess um, for Prince, this is tough. I thought of another name for Prince. And I think there's a chance he's thrown off his voice. Are you sure Phil Collins is lurking or isn't lurking? If it's not him, then maybe, um, well, I don't think it's Phil Collins, but um, I thought about him as like a, a, a wild card. And maybe we'll have him on in a future season. But for right now, I'm going to uh, begrudgingly guess A-Rod for the Prince, Alex Rodriguez. And I think Ringmaster is going to win. I think she's the best contestant. Um, easy. She has a phenomenal voice. She's so sweet. And I think that this contestant is someone that the judges have not mentioned yet. There's a lot of hint towards Hannah Montana. Talks about her relationship with Miley Cyrus. I think this is former Hannah Montana star Emily Osmond. And I've been calling this one for a while now. So we'll see um, who's under these masks and whatnot. Maybe we'll have different guesses as 
the show goes on. And I'll let you guys know about that for sure. All right, Survivor. Um, They're down to six now. So um, we'll talk about last week's episode. Um, so the um, immunity challenge was where um, the players stood on a narrow perch with their hands on the back of an overhead behind them. Um, and the last one standing won immunity. The first person to file the challenge would be forced to participate in a game called Do or Die, which could eliminate them from the game without voting. And the uh, the players were able to opt out of the challenge to be safe from Do or Die but would not be immune from the potential vote. So the two players that went for it were Jonathan and Lindsay, and the rest of them sat out. And who wins Jonathan yet again? Um, and then comes Tribal Council. Lindsay plays Do or Die. Um, there were two skulls. In the boxes of do or die. Which meant you were going home. And then there was fire. Which meant. That you were safe. So. She picked the fire one. She was safe. Um, then Drea used her knowledge of power. In tribal council. Advantage to ask Mike if he had an idol. But Mike said no. As he gave his idol. To Omar. To hold on. So that was a really smart play. By Mike. And then the votes. Um, Jonathan. Um, dr- voted for Drea. Lindsay Drea. Mary Ann Drea. Mike Drea. Omar Drea. Romeo Mike. And Drea had two votes. And she used both of them on Mike. And ultimately, Drea obviously got voted out. Um, so Drea, I thought, was bound to go home at some point. Um, we're down there at Final Six. So we have Jonathan, Lindsay, Mike, Omar, Romeo, and Marianne. One of the last two, I think, that I mentioned... We'll go home tonight, I think. I think Romeo has outdid his day. I've been calling for Romeo to go home for weeks. But it's just amazing that he keeps on surviving week by week by week. Um, so I personally believe that it's either going to be him or Marianne that goes home tonight. I think Marianne survives one more week. And I think this is finally the week that Omar goes. Although I would not rule out Jonathan or Mike, amazingly enough. I think Omar is now a real contender to win this thing, so you can't rule that out. So I'm going to say Romeo again for like the fourth week in a row on the show. But I do not feel good about it. All right, news and notes time. Um, not that much to talk about. A lot of it was really um, with um, the uh, primaries. Um, so Kevin Durant becomes the latest NBA player to call up Beverly for his Chris Paul takes. So Chris Paul... Um, He's getting a lot of defense among his peers, obviously. And people that are jealous, like Patrick Beverly, are calling him out. Matt Harvey suspended 60 games for violating MLB's joint drug prevention and treatment program. Um, this is not surprising. Um, uh, and I feel bad for Matt Harvey. Hopefully um, he gets help and hopefully we see him pitching the big leagues again. At least give him a shot. Um, 
Bogart's Red Sox extension on hold as um, the agent says contract talks will definitely wait until after the season ends. NBA is eyeing a take foul as the league is discussing a rule that would award an offensive team one free throw in possession on a take foul. So that is very interesting. The NBA is discussing an in-season tournament um, after the success of the play-in tournament. So that is really interesting. Bryce Harper received a platelet-rich plasma injection in his elbow for the small UCL tear. So that is um, very interesting. And hopefully uh, Bryce uh, gets through it and uh, performs. Um, Tariq Cullen has a torn Achilles as he was streaming a workout session on Instagram Live today. Yikes. That guy hasn't played in years. And the ringer's Kevin Clark predicted that the Magic would win the lottery if he didn't watch. He didn't watch, and guess what? The Magic won the lottery. Um, I'm sure he was on Bill Simmons' podcast last night. I got to listen to it. But um, Kevin Clark is a diehard Orlando fan, and uh, his tweet went viral because the Magic indeed won the draft lottery. All right, last but not least, my best bet of the day brought to you by FanDuel. Um we have some interesting stuff on the table for best bet. And I really like the um hmm. I don't feel super about it, but I'm going to go with the Tampa Bay Rays first half run line, minus a half and minus 115. I'm going to lay a full unit on it. Do I feel good about it? No. But that's the one I'm going to ride with for my best bet of the day. All right, so that's it for today's show. I'll be back tomorrow recapping everything and looking ahead to everything tomorrow as well. And I hope you guys have a great day, everyone.